Kia tato tufano. It's great to be back. Um, I'm cohort one. It's been a year and a half since I joined the program, and I'm here to give you a little update of what I've been up to. So what you see here is a picture of me in 2016 at We Share Fest, a conference that I organized for several years in Paris. And right here, I'm actually talking about sort of an unusual experiment that we ran of decentralized organization with a project called Backfeed. And they had developed a Slack bot, for anyone who knows what Slack is, to try to evaluate contributions and create sort of a decentralized governance model. Now, if you fast forward to today, it's been actually eight years that I've been in several different global communities working on how to create alternative organizational models that create participatory governance, self-management, and support more people to do work that matters. The main communities that I've been part of are WeShare, that is mainly Europe-based, and Inspiral, that started here. So it is these two communities that actually brought me here, my curiosity to learn about Inspiral, when I was in sort of a personal and professional transition in 2016. And so that's when I discovered the fellowship and decided I'm going to join. So at the time, uh, I was really holding a question, which is that we've spent all this time in these communities developing great practices on how to do participatory governance, and we were really starting to see there's something here and this is working. But how do we take this to the next level? And what tools and practices do we need to really enable more people and teams to develop these practices? And specifically for me, I was asking the question, what kind of a vehicle or um, environment do I need to be able to do this work in a way that's resilient for myself and the people around me? So that's why I created Greater Than, um, a co-owned company that's doing consulting and training around all of these different subjects that, that I just uh, mentioned. And this, this organization is really a vehicle to support all of us that are trying to bring these practices to, to more people. And so what was interesting is that when I actually was here a year and a half ago, um, I started with a project that was called CoBudget, which really was the beginning of the Greater Than journey. And CoBudget is a collaborative funding tool for collaborative budgeting, was developed in the Inspiral network. And what's interesting is that since then, we've learned a whole lot. The team has changed and evolved. We've run a bunch of experiments, things that failed, things that we, we learned. And I guess what we really realized is where can we as a team provide real value to the world and make a difference in what we're good at? And so what we actually realized is that building more software and developing this collaborative funding tool into a SaaS was not actually how we were going to provide the most important support. But what was really needed was actually more focus on the human side of technology and how to develop the right practices and create a foundation for a more collaborative culture. So that's what we, we, did, we decided to do. So an interesting development happened about in the last year, which is that coming and realizing that we have all these interesting practices um, on how to help groups organize, the, the blockchain and decentralization space has started to get quite interested in this. So as, a, as you've maybe heard, um, a lot of these organizations uh, that are sort of talking about big visions of a fully decentralized society that runs on distributed technology, um, there's sometimes a bit of a human perspective missing in here. And interestingly, back in 2016, when we ran this experiment, this element had already come up quite strongly. So at the time, we were trying to implement this uh, technological system and I noticed that somehow humans were being seen as agents most of the time. And the assumption was they respond to bounties, as people usually talk about it in the space, or financial incentives. And somehow it seemed like the, the, they were somehow missing some perspective on what actually happens when real people take your technology and want to use it on the ground in their own projects. So that's the path that we've been, been on. 
uh, we've been working with lots of different organizations recently in the blockchain and decentralization space on how to bridge that gap and actually understand how is this technology useful to real communities and organizations that want to do their work differently? And do we actually even want it? And so um, I wanted to give a few examples of some of the recent work we're doing at the moment. Um, one which is super interesting is with a, an organization called Consensus. Um, they are developing an ecosystem and infrastructure around Ethereum. And we've been helping them build capacity internally to help their teams do self-management because they have a very large vision of how to be super decentralized and, and we're helping make that a reality from a human perspective. Another one that I want to go a little bit deeper onto is actually what happened um, from this Backfeed experiment I mentioned earlier. So Backfeed actually was reborn as a company called DAOStack and DAOStack's objective is to build a technology stack for something called a DAO, which is a decentralized autonomous organization. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of the different ways people are trying to define this, but the overall idea is that a new type of organization is possible that has its rules coded into a decentralized network. And so, um, as part of a, a first experiment, DAOStack has launched its first DAO that's called Genesis. And this really goes to the heart of what I think we need to do at this moment to develop these practices. And that's just to take baby steps and to run experiments with real people and see how we can actually learn as we go and evolve what actually is, is the right kind of governance system. So I'm going to give you some, uh, some deeper insights into what we're actually doing and these things that could actually seem quite simple but um, are, are really part of this learning process. So what you can see here is um, Genesis Alpha, which is, uh, th this is basically a, the first decentralized app that DAOStack has built. And it's sort of a, like a collaborative funding tool because it enables uh, anyone who comes onto this platform to submit a proposal and the people in the system that have reputation, they can vote on those. And so there's uh, something special called holographic consensus and that is a protocol that sort of defines the rules of how do the different votes impact whether a proposal passes. And so the proposals you can see here, they're actually being used to spend a budget every week. So people are suggesting things for budgets and they're getting passed or failed. And so this is quite simple, but this is actually running a, on a blockchain at the moment. And one of the key things that I find interesting about this, uh, this approach is actually trying to solve this problem of attention. Because if we're in a huge organization that gets bigger and bigger, we have an attention problem, right? How do we actually make sure that people are looking at the things that need attention at a certain time and not have an information overload? So um, they've actually built a prediction market with a token that's called Gen. And that enables people to bet on whether they think a proposal is going to pass or not and whether they think it's important. So this is sort of a system for how to actually uh, incentivize people to look through proposal and decide whether they think that's important to this certain organization. So here you can just see a, um, a screenshot of this mechanism of a proposal being boosted and being put into the visibility of everybody. So um, just to sort of conclude on what we've been doing here. So we have not been focusing on the technology side of this project. We've actually been uh, running calls with big groups of people that are the sort of first early adopters and trying to talk about what intentionality can we put into how we build these new organizations and really asking the tough questions around, is this actually creating a behavior that we want or how do we, how do we tweak the system to, to make sense? And also, where does it really make sense for us to use this? And where is it maybe actually, uh, maybe we have other applications that are better for that. And I guess one thing that's quite exciting is that uh, last year, we had our first big disagreement on a vote. So um, that was the first time that really this sort of protocol came into play and actually uh, enabled more people to come and see what was happening because the, the vote was extended over time because it was such a tie. And so uh, I would say this has been a really interesting learning experience to see what happens when there's disagreement and how the different mechanisms play out. Now, 
One of the things that we've recently done that's sort of continuing on this objective of how do we bring in these perspectives of intention and human organizing into the, the blockchain space. So we've actually created a sort of a, a guidebook called the, the DAO of the DAO, which uh, sort of breaks down five different steps for how to run a decentralized proposal process. And we're really trying to put forward this idea of how do we, how do we be intentional and bridge the, the, all the knowledge that we have around doing collaborative organizing with these really new, exciting ways of doing things. And so, to conclude, all of this, all of these practices, they're of course not just for the blockchain space. They're for any organization that wants to be innovative about its organizational model. And I'm really, really excited to share that I and 10 others from the Inspiral Network and a bunch of other contributors have actually written a book together. Um, you can actually find it at the, at the library stand here. And it's really a collection of eight years of learnings and practices in the voices of the collective. So uh, it's actually, it's impressive how easy and fast it was to write that book because we were all contributing a piece. Um, so we're really excited to see how that can help people in many different states of their organization to, to um, implement these practices. And so I guess uh, I just wanted to close on that, that I think no matter what new future of work we might see and what technologies are going to get developed and what problems we're trying to solve, community and the human side of how we implement this is so key. And so we just want to keep making sure that that perspective is always in the room. Kia ora. Thank <laughs> you.